What's up Spokane? Welcome back. I'm your host Sam Perry here to keep you up to date on all things happening in our wonderful city in the Inland Northwest. To get started, Hoopfest is back. Yes, the largest 3-on-3 basketball tournament in the world will take place on the weekend of September 11th and 12th. It's said to be smaller this year with approximately 3,000 teams signing up as opposed to the usual 6,000. But director Matt Santangelo says it will still be a great weekend for all. Volunteers are still needed. If you can, sign up. But if you want to play, you have until August 9th. Gather a team and register. Next up, two seats on the Spokane City Council are currently being fought over in the polls from the primary election from this past Tuesday. Jonathan Bingo currently leads the race for the District 1 seat, followed by Nagmana Sharazi and Luke Jasmine III. In District 3, Zach Zapone is the leader, where he's followed by Mike Lish. The winners on each ballot will head to the general election this November. We're all on the edge of our seats. And that's what's up, Spokane. To stay fresh on all the latest news regarding Spokane and the Inland Northwest, tune in next time to What's Up Spokane with me, Sam Perry. We'll be right back with The Pulse. Well, this is Looms Day in Spokane. We got about 40 firefighters and their friends and family handing out 40,000 cups of water as the day goes by. It's a very good opportunity to see the public and support them and help them out and cheer them on during Bloomsday. It's one of the best things about Spokane is that we have these major events and the whole community comes together not just to participate but to volunteer and show that they really care about our city and making our city look great. This type of an event really is emblematic of Spokane because so many people get involved. We have 50,000 people probably running this race. Always has been a very huge event. Right now we're at the corner of Broadway and Nettleton. It's the last water station before the finish, so people are pretty much uh, dehydrated by the time they get to us. They really need our water. The water stations are a vital part, especially on a warm days like today. It's real important that we have the volunteers to help with that. Without the volunteers, Bloomsday wouldn't exist. All up and down the course, there are people that are involved in this celebration. It really is a celebration of what Spokane's all about. At Wendell, you are respected, you are valued, and we have an experience tailored to fit your lifestyle. I'm Nick. And I'm Gina. And we bought three cars from Wendell Motors. Uh, throughout the day, I just kind of would get updates, texts, phone calls, and I was actually really impressed with, with how my wife was taken care of. People should shop at Wendell because they make you feel like family. For your tailored experience, come see us at Wendell at the Y or Wendell.com. Welcome to Apex Plaza, Spokane's one-stop cannabis destination. Apex Cannabis features thousands of economy, value, and luxury cannabis products. Canagear features hemp-based CBD products, glass, goods, and gear. Stop by 1325 North Division to experience the Apex difference. This product has intoxicating effects and may be habit forming. Marijuana can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence of this drug. There may be health risk associated with the consumption of this product. For use only by adults 21 and older, keep out of the reach of children. When building a home or considering a major remodel, who are you going to choose? The Spokane Home Builders Association is an organization that works to elevate professionalism in the residential construction industry. We promote, protect, and educate for our community building our community one home at a time. We are the Spokane Home Builders Association. Kent welcomes back the Car Guy host, Klaus Kindor, and they talk about the high price of used cars these days. Well, Kent Adams here, and welcome to the Car Guy. No, I'm not the Car Guy. This guy is the Car Guy. Hello, Kent, how are you? I'm doing fine. Where have you been? Working. Working. You know, what, you know that's... Kind of successful people do. We actually get up out of bed and go work. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine yeah. that. I mean, like kind of what you guys do every day. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, we've missed you. Well, we've, thank you. We, we, and it's kind of fun to be back. We're going to be doing this a couple times a month. Actually, it's it's your show. I just wanted to welcome you back. And I'm glad you did. Thank you. It's nice to be back. I've, it, it, I've missed you guys. Something terrible. Yeah, yeah. 
Is that why you shooed me away when I visited you the other day? Yeah. Pretty okay. much, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was, I, you came by, I was wondering what you were selling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody does. Oh, Klaus. Um, a lot of things have happened. Uh, oh, yeah. We did a show a year ago, even still during COVID and so and the lockdown and so forth. And we out at your place where yeah. we were apart in different cars and all of that. But we haven't done a show since. Yeah. A lot has happened since then. And the car market has changed since then. It's yes. A lot of things have gone really strange. My wife and I were having a conversation the other day about, I don't know why it came up, about getting a, a used car. Not for us, but for somebody was asking and you know where to go and all of that. And that wasn't the point really of the conversation because I turned around and said, only if you are desperate at this point yeah. because of what's happening. So yeah. let, let, let's talk about, and the reason for that is well, the, the new cars, yeah. there aren't very many. So people are going to the used cars because they, in some cases, absolutely have to have transportation. Sure. I get that. Sure. But what's the market out there? Bring us up to date. What's going oh, on? Oh, it's tough, Kent. It's tough. Um, the, the, the big, I think there's a number of challenges. Um, number one, obviously, is the lack of new car inventory. Okay. Which makes the larger dealers, you know, if you're a, 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 a large dealer, whether you be a Ford dealer, a Chevrolet dealer, or right. an Audi dealer, or a Porsche dealer, or whatever, and you can't get new product, then you you're really going to run out. Yeah, you've got very little to sell, which right. means you need to go out and, and rely on used car or pre-owned business in order to keep your doors open. Right. And you know, even though I buy and sell cars for a living, um, right now I'm telling my customers, wait. Why is that? Because the cars are overpriced. They're they're simply overpriced. I, I'll give you a perfect example. Okay. This morning, I, I was online and I was trying to put a bid on, on a BMW that was actually being sold at auction down in California. Wholesale value on the car was about $5,000. Okay. So as a dealer, I would expect that I could normally buy this car for about $5,000. Right. Your, your book wholesale value. Right. right? The car sold uh, about two hours later for 10006 Okay. And that, that means sounds that more it, like the retail. Yeah. And actually it's over retail. Yes. And actually a dealer bought this at a wholesale auction and paid well over retail for the car just to have inventory to sell. Wow. And unfortunately, that now trickles down to the consumer. Yes. And they're being asked to pay over retail value for cars that simply aren't worth that kind of money. Yeah. So the $5,000 wholesale cost... He paid ten thousand something. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to ship it and all the other things that. go Oh, not only that. I mean, he had he paid for he paid for the auction price. He okay. paid for the auction fee, probably okay. another four or five hundred dollars. Okay. He paid to have it shipped to wherever it was going. Okay. The car is going to have to go through their shop to make sure it's safe. They're right. going to recondition the automobile and clean it up for sale, and now they're in this thing, twelve thirteen thousand dollars, and right. they got to make a profit on it. Right. So are they going to are they going to make a profit on it though? My opinion is no. Okay. Uh, my opinion is no. They will probably lose money on the car, but to keep they'll the try client. to make money on the back end of the deal. Okay. And, and, and in other words, they're going to try to get the consumer, you, yes, to pay for an extended warranty, a tire warranty, some kind of paint preparation where I promise you'll never have to wax your car again. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and all this wonderful stuff that will hopefully make up for the loss that they may take on the automobile. Or at least part of it. Or at least part of yeah. it. Yeah. And I understand the dealers have to have something to sell. Yeah. I get that. I'm not in that boat. I don't have 50, 60 cars on my, or in inventory. I right. keep, you know, maybe a, a dozen cars in inventory at any one time. Um, and I understand they got mouths to feed and I understand they got bills to pay. Yes. I, I just don't know that they're doing their clients a real justice when it comes to the pricing on these cars. The, the, okay. So, 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 so I'm going to buy a car at maybe fourteen thousand dollars in the in, for that okay. example okay? okay but i've got a car that's really worth retail probably maybe six thousand seven seven eight, okay. right around in there somewhere in there okay so i'm going to hold it for a year or two because i had to have transportation but basically all that value goes away well again it's not the the cars the value is, hasn't gone up the price of the car has gone up, yeah, but it's not necessarily any more valuable. 
Because if you go to your lender, let's say for as an example, we'll use this car as an example. Okay. Okay. Let's let's say the car has a blue book, Kelly blue book, or NADA book value of let's say eight thousand dollars. Okay. On a high end. Okay. But the dealer's going to ask you to pay fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars for this car. Right. Your credit is good, but not great. Okay. So your lender, as an example, may may finance one hundred and ten percent of the book. Blue. Value okay, and again, let's say that's seven thousand dollars. Your credit's good, so they'll finance seventy seven hundred. Yeah, in order for you to get financed on this, you're going to have to come up with that balance. Yes, between the seventy seven hundred and the fourteen odd thousand for plus a car tax and that's license. worth less than eight for 000. a car that's worth less than eight thousand. And the challenge being there is, if you do buy it, you're going to be stuck in this thing forever. Yeah. There's yeah. really no way you're ever because gonna you're get never going to catch up. I mean that gap exactly, yeah. exactly. Wow. And again, I understand that they need to have cars for sale. I get that. Right. They have employees they need to feed. I get that as well. They have to have something in inventory for their customers to how buy. Frust how frustrating for everybody! Oh. It's not just one set of people, right? Yeah, it's difficult. It's really, really difficult out so there. So what do we? What? You're the expert. You're the car guy. What do you advise someone to do right now? Unless you have to buy something. For transportation, I mean, have to, have to, have to. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. And again, I do this for a living. Yeah. You know, so for tell for to tell people yeah, don't yeah. spend money with me right now. Yeah. You know, I'm cutting my own throat, so yeah. to speak. Um, but I wouldn't be doing my clients uh, uh, any favors trying to put them into one of these cars. Yeah, I really because wouldn't. they're going to come back to you and talk to you in three or four years. When? No, they're not going to come back to me. <laughs> well, they're, they're going to yell at you. Yeah, well, okay, over possibly, the phone. possibly. Yeah. But I, or again, I haven't done them any favor. No. I really haven't done them any favor at all. I've kept the doors open. I've maybe put a couple of bu bucks in my in my salesman's pocket, but I haven't done my clients any favors. I no. really truly haven't. No. Okay, we know there are people out there who can't get to work via public transportation or other. They've got a good job opportunity now. Um, they've taken advantage of, of some of the openings that are yes. there. And, and, okay. and good and, for them, yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely good for them, more yeah. power to them. But they really need the, the vehicle. They've got kids yeah. or whatever to take around to the doctor's office, school, and all the other things that life brings at you. Yeah. But they gotta have a car. And right now, because of the market and because of the prices being unrealistically high, I would suggest if you have to have transportation, buy the least expensive thing you can that's reliable. Okay. Until this cycle yeah. hopefully ends, and you know we start building cars again, new cars. The dealers will have new cars in inventory to, from which to sell, which means their used car inventory lessens a little bit, and prices come back down to where they're supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. So, so you really add a lower loss. Yes. Eventually, eventually. Yes. Yeah. but you know, hopefully, tell the kids you're not gonna, you know, you might have to. We might have to drop you off a half a block from school yeah. or whatever. We may have to take you in a minivan. Yeah, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, do they still sell those? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but it's tough. It's tough. It's, and, and it is. as a consumer, um, I would be leery of the pricing out there. You really need to do, you do your homework as a right. consumer to make sure you're not overpaying for these cars. But let's be honest, the dealers are not liking this at all. No. No. I mean, it really, yeah. you know, it puts them in an awful spot, number one. they lose some profitability, um, irritate a lot of potential customers when they yeah. go in. Why do we not have a lot of new cars available? Well, you know, this thing started obviously with this. I'm not going to. It started with COVID. Yes. Um, there are reasons that cars are not being produced, whether it be people not going to work, whether it be circuit boards that aren't being produced for the cars, whether there's not enough tires being produced for automobiles. We can't we, we can't put the blame just on the manufacturer. Okay. There's all those wonderful vendors that supply parts and, and, and supplies right. for the automotive industry. Um, and all those supplies are difficult to obtain right now. We know now. the supply line is tough for lots of products these right. days, right? Right. Yeah. And then, then again, I look at it this and you know, if I were Ford or General Motors yeah. and are relying on a vendor to provide circuit boards for me, I'd probably figure out a way to how, how to build those circuit boards myself. Yeah. Um, and not have to wait or rely on somebody else. And even sell to the competition because Maybe there's profit so. av av available there Maybe too, so. Right? There's another outlook or outlet for them to make money. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, I agree. 
I, I don't know. You know, let's let's hope that when this everybody when everybody gets back to work and things yes. start being produced again, and there's new cars on the lots, and there's incentive money for new cars all of a sudden again because there's yes. not now. Obviously, the dealers are not going to give away what they cannot get. Yes. Right. Right. So, excuse me. So there's no incentive money right now. There's no. Gee whiz, golly, what, you know, $3,500 rebate on this yes, and $4,000 yes. back on that. You're not seeing those commercials, are we? Right. No, you're <laughs> right? not. No. And, and it's simple economics, you know, Econ 101. The, the, new, the new car dealers can't give away what they cannot get enough of. Right, right. And the reality of it is, is that these larger dealers, these larger dealer groups like AutoNation and Power and Penske, you know, I, I, I buy a lot of cars for clients at auctions. Yes. And what ends up happening is I'm getting outbid and not by a little, but by thousands and thousands of dollars. By like 5,000 to 10,000? By these big groups that are yeah. buying up these cars, truckloads of them, in order to keep inventory. Yeah. And, and again, I get it. But there's but nobody's winning. Nobody's winning. Nobody's winning. No. And, and then for, unfortunately, the, the worst loser is the consumer. Yeah. yeah. You, the consumer, is the worst loser. You're being asked to pay way, way, way too much right. for an automobile um, simply because there's a lack of, of inventory. Well, let's close on the fact that you're welcome back to well, the car guy. Well, thanks. It's good to be here. Yes. And what are some of the things coming up that you can think of that you want to talk about? Well, there's, 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 there was an interesting situation a few months ago where a client of mine um, found himself in a position whereby he thought he had done all his due diligence. Yeah. He, he thought he had done all his homework and was sold an automobile that he was promised had never been damaged. And uh, we find out some couple of weeks later that that's not the case. So, uh, you know, one, one of the things we should might want to focus on in a later show is, right. is the Carfax auto check. Um, who are you going to believe? What, can, what information can you rely on? And what else can you do to protect yourself um, even if a car comes back with a clean, clean Carfax or an auto check? That's, yeah. that's something else we but can you, discuss. But the key word, I think, is or. Yes. Because there are ways to do both. That really help protect your rear end. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. And and dealers should do the same thing. You know, if they're offering an automobile, show me both. Show me both. Don't okay. show me one. Yeah. Um, it's been my experience that, boy, how can I do this without being in trouble or get myself in trouble? Oh, that um, would be a first. I know. I know. <laughs> um, it's been my experience that one of the reporting agencies isn't always as accurate as another okay okay that's about I'll, I'll leave it at that for our next show okay all right so cool. tune in right <laughs> good to be back okay thanks for having me back it's been neat um we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this yeah. and hopefully we'll be uh not only entertaining but informative for our clients well and i think too there are a lot of opportunities coming if we can get things rolling again in the industry yeah that will be good for yes. everybody including perhaps most importantly the consumer. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and right now, like I said, you know, the consumer is being asked to pay an awful lot yeah. for an awful little. And uh, I, I, feel, I, I, I feel sorry for the guy, the guy or the gal who waited a year or two thinking they now would be the time, you know, but who, who could predict two years ago or three years ago yeah. what we've gone through and the, what the effect on industry? I have, I have four clients right now looking for a particular car. Yeah. Right. That a year ago, this would have been a non-issue. Yeah. And right now I'm telling these people, and it means an awful lot of money to me. I'm telling them, let's wait. Okay. And fortunately, they're bright enough to understand why I'm telling you yes. that. Right? It's, it's, you know, a, a car that I could have bought as an example eight months ago for $60,000 is now $85,000. Uh, okay. But when production starts back up on these new cars, okay. this $85,000 car is against, again one time going to become a $60,000 yeah. car. Yeah. So I can't ask my, comers, my, my, my customers yeah. to pay that additional $25,000. Yeah. I just can't do it. Yeah. And, and even though you warn them and everything else, all they'll know in two years or three years is that I bought that car from you for $85,000. It's barely worth it. Yeah. 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 And sometimes you can lead a horse, right? Yeah. But Yeah, yeah I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Well, we'll be talking about horses, but I think more of the horses in an engine. Horse right? power. Horse power. Lots of it. Next time on The Car Guy. Thanks, Kent. Thanks. 
The economy is getting stronger, banks are lending again, and interest rates are at historic lows. Now is a great time to buy your dream home. The caring and knowledgeable professionals at Homes for You have been helping people just like you for over 20 years. They take the time to listen to what you want and will help you find just the right home in Washington or Idaho. Real estate is what we do at Homes for You, 928-5782, or visit online at Homes, the number 4, youspokane.com. This is River Ridge Frame Shop called Frame It Today, where we can take your art, customize it, and get it ready to hang on the wall. here at River Ridge Hardware, 2803 West Garland. The world has changed a lot in 50 years, and Kimley Haygood has changed with it. We still provide our customers with the highest level of service, whether it's financing, construction management, property management and maintenance, leasing or sales, our team is here to help you make the best decisions with your real estate. Weather in the inland northwest can wear you down. And if your gutters are in poor condition or you do not have gutters, you could suffer damage that could cost a fortune to fix. Rain Man Seamless Rain Gutters has almost 30 years of professional experience in serving the Inland Northwest region and strives to ensure customer service that is second to none from the time you call to the end of the project. Kent will now sit down with local resident and a true Spokane enthusiast, Kate Hudson, on The Pulse. Welcome to The Pulse of Spokane. Kent Adams here. And today is our monthly report on what's coming up in the Spokane Coeur d'Alene area and a lot is going on next. us today to learn how PowerView Automation makes everyday living effortless. I'm Tyler Lamasters. Spokane's homelessness has been mismanaged by City Council. There is no compassion in failure. A fresh perspective is needed to address this issue. In November, I hope you vote for me, Tyler Lamasters, for Spokane City Council, District 2. <laughs> Paid for by the committee to elect Tyler Lamasters. Starting a digging project? Before you reach for the shovel, you must click callbeforeyoudig.org, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. Protect our buried utilities and click callbeforeyoudig.org. Before I forget, I want to tell you, Kate Hudson is here from Visit Spokane. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank okay. You. I noticed this time, because you always send me the list ahead mm -hmm. of time, it's getting longer. It is. Yes. It's... Almost full three pages. Yes. Of course, it's 18 or 20 point font, so, so <laughs> Kent can read it. But I mean, but we've been down to one page before. Oh, gosh. In and the me last year. Trying to scrape together things that maybe you could do that aren't actual oh, events. I but know. Things you could do around the area. Yeah, and online and whatever, know, right? Virtually. Welcome. Yeah. Isn't it nice to be able to go places and it so is. forth? It have is. you been going out to restaurants and so forth? Occasionally, yes. Occasionally? Mm -hmm. Well, let's get your husband to take you out more often. Right. Don't I you hope think? He's watching. Okay, we'll cut just that piece <laughs> and send it to Tom Hudson. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, no, good to see you. And unfortunately, the day we're doing this, we've still got some smoke out there. I know. And a lot of things, activities outside, outside. are being held back, at least this morning, hoping that the winds yes. will pick up and and blow it out of our area into some other area. But um, but there's a lot going on out at Northern Quest. Who's yes. coming to town? Oh, gosh. Well, we've got a whole list here. 
Yes. Um, Rodney Carrington will be at Northern Quest Resort and Casino on August 6th. And he is a comedian. Okay. So he is one of the top 10 grossing comedians in the U.S. right now. And he's a funny, funny guy. And he will be performing outside, as you mentioned. Yes. So hopefully the smoke will blow out over the next couple of days so it's a little more comfortable. Right. And I know we're expecting cooler temperatures, so it won't be um, hotter than Hades out there. No kidding. Um, sweating while you're laughing. But yeah. Um, so hopefully it'll be a nice We've had some night. good shows so far this year. We have. Yes. Yes. And more coming, right? Yeah. But let's talk about what... Okay, Northern Quest. Yes, so we have that. Tickets going on. available. Yep, they are available. Okay. Um, tickets are anywhere from I think fifty bucks on up, depending on okay. where you want to sit. Okay. Um, so you can make a whole night of it. You could stay at the hotel out there. It's beautiful. Um, after the show, maybe grab a drink at one of the different bars at Northern Quest. It's a whole. And I it's bet a whole you could thing. gamble too. And I think you can gamble. Okay. Yes. All right. If you're feeling up to it. Yes. Right. If you're feeling lucky. So, and um, do it responsibly. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's why you rent a hotel room and then you don't have to drive. You don't yeah. have to worry about it. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Spokane Comedy Club yes. is back in action. They are. And Full they time been, now, right? Yes, they have a ton going on. And I actually had to pare down the list of things oh, really? happening there because <laughs> they have so much going on. Well, good. Which is very refreshing and wonderful. Yes. Um, so Spokane Comedy Club this month has Taylor Tomlinson, August 5th through the 7th. So that's this weekend. Okay. Um, she's only 25 years old and she has quickly become one of the funniest comedians in the U.S as well and so uh she has a great routine i love it she's funny um i think she's relatable if you are in the younger set <laughs> talking about yeah why did you look and... at me when you were saying that <laughs> meaning like don't bother kid it's for your grandkids not your well not you. i can yeah. lump myself in with you because oh, i am a, also old oh give me a break 25 is that. is a distant memory for me yeah. and i remember when i thought 25 was ancient yeah. Uh, I remember when you more. don't trust anyone over 30 <laughs> and then turning 30 going, no one's going to trust me anymore. I just remember thinking, 30 so young. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's all about perspective. Hey, so, I recognize the next name. Yeah. Bobcat Goldthwaite will also be at the Spokane Comedy Club August 13th and 14th. Um, his shows are not sold out yet. Uh, side note, Taylor Tomlinson's shows, all but one, I believe, are sold out. So if you would oh. like to see her... You need to get online and reserve your tickets oh, now. Oh, really? Yes. Well, good for her. I know. Good Fantastic. for her. She's very popular. And, and I want to say it again while I'm thinking of it, mm -hmm. and that is our comedy club here is on like the A circuit, isn't it? Is, it is, yes. Yeah. Uh, they love, the comedians love coming here. It's very yes. well managed, well run, right. uh, and well loved. So, And they love the Spokane community because yes. we we love to have guests. We, we just laugh at them. them. Yes. Yeah. That's what they want. Yeah. So he still oh, has okay. some uh, shows available. Uh, so again, SpokaneComedyClub.com, you can reserve your tickets online. Okay. Um, and then on August 22nd, they have Jamie Kennedy, uh, who is an actor and a comedian. Okay. Um, he uh, was in Malibu's Most Wanted, as good, as good As It Gets, Enemy of the State, really big in the 90s, okay. uh, early 2000s, and he's still on the... Uh, comic circuit and he is funny so we've got lots of stuff going on at the comedy club uh, lots of options and those are just three of the names i picked out they have other things going on as so well. they really should go to the yes. website to, you should to look at yes uh, they have trivia nights uh they have all sorts of things you know local comedians that perform nice. uh so there's lots of options i've had some friends do that they went through a class oh yeah yeah and then went <laughs> yeah you know, they still talk to me after i know <laughs> Uh, you should go and go through the class and do Yeah, show. right. I feel right. like you could do it. Okay, moving on real quick. <laughs> but um, bum <laughs> We've got shopping. Okay. Bazaar. Bazaar. What is, what is Bazaar? This is a wonderful event. Uh, it's put on by Terrain, which is our local art collective. Okay. Um, fantastic event. Um, all of the goods at Bazaar are made by local artists. Ooh. And for one day only, August 7th, Okay. Uh, they will take over... Uh, Part of downtown Spokane outside and they will have their wares set up and you I think in the past nothing has been over a hundred dollars the oh, whole point okay. of this event really was to reasonable make, yes it was to make local art and get introduced things, to the artists yes and and accessible for people not everyone can afford to spend five thousand dollars on a painting right so this makes art accessible where will for it everyone. be held downtown Spokane on Main Street okay uh yeah so uh, head on down. It's a popular event. Yeah. Lots of your favorite local artists will be there, uh, like Chris Bovey, who does all those wonderful vintage prints. Yes. Uh, he will be there with a the booth set up. So you've got lots of options. Wow. Um, That's great. Yeah, it's a great way to get some early Christmas shopping done. That's how I look at it. Ah, okay. Yeah. So 
You're not going to tell me what you're going to get me? Nope. Oh, it's okay. A surprise. Okay. Someone follow her down at the show. <laughs> no. I'm... Coal is very cheap these days. <laughs> I'm lucky to get that. <laughs> um, Shakespeare in the Park. Yes. So this is fantastic. Spokane has a new Shakespeare group. Uh, this is their inaugural inaugural season. Words are hard. Yes. Uh, and they are doing shows through, in Spokane all summer long, and they will be and they're free. That's the best part. Uh, so they will be performing a Midsummer Night Stream uh, this uh, this month, uh, right. August sixth, seventh, and eighth at the Pavilion, and then on August twentieth and twenty second in the Lilac Bowl, twenty sixth, twenty seventh, and twenty ninth. They're all going to be in Riverfront Park, so you can go. So either in the Lilac Bowl or, or the Pavilion. Yes, so check their website right. to make sure you know where to go uh, if you are interested. And it's it's just wonderful. Um, I think it would be fun to go see it under the twinkling lights of the Pavilion. Oh, yes. Because it's beautiful down there. Yes. So yeah. it's free, and that's what I love. You can bring your whole family. Ha and it, you know, you Has can the a Pavilion picnic. put up fog lights yet for the smoke? <laughs> no. Seriously. Hopefully yeah. it's gone by the time no kidding. all of this is happening. Yeah, I, you know, I debate whether we want a wind or not, because that would bring in more smoke, but right. then also might get rid of what we have. Right. Yeah. Hopefully the cooler temperatures plus wind will help. Yes. So look, we I have... always worry with the wind that wildfire danger is so high. And... Yeah. Who wins fan flames? So yeah, they do. It's just a, it's a mess. It is. It is. It so, is. Now we can go back to Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Oh, okay. Because they have uh, concerts. I was going to take a gamble that you might say oh, that. Oh, we have Collective Soul. Uh, they have some other music concerts going on, but they're sold out. So oh. I picked out Collective Soul with Better Than Ezra, and they have a special guest, Tonic. Okay. Uh, for my age set, uh, they're very familiar uh, okay. since I'm a 90s kid. Um, they were very big in the early 90s. See, my, I'm an 1890s kid. Okay. <laughs> you said it, not me. Yeah, I know. I, I was trying to say it before you did. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so they will so be- So you actually know these groups? I do. Okay. August 20th, they will be performing in the outdoor theater at Northern Quest. Okay. So again, make a weekend of it. It'll be yeah. fun. Yeah. I bet that is. I bet that really is. It and is. I've done it before. I, I haven't been in. They've really updated the oh. last couple of years their their site out there. It's spectacular out there. Yeah. It really is beautiful. And they've uh, redone the hotel rooms again. And they're just oh, wow. beautiful. The spa is stunning. Okay. They have a Himalayan salt room over there now that oh, you can wow. sit and relax in. Somebody's apparently spending a lot of time there that knows all this. It's my job to know. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. We also sure. have Counting Crows. Speaking okay, of what is Counting Crows? Speaking of the early is 90s. Is that like lining up ducks in a row? Kind of. Oh. Yes. Uh, they are a wonderful group performing, and okay. they're going to be performing in the Pavilion in Riverfront Park. Okay. Um, because of COVID, they weren't able to host any live music last year, yeah. which was their first year open. Uh, so this is, this is their inaugural season right. for live music and concerts in the pavilion. So I'm very excited about this. Yeah, they've had a bunch of groups. That, I'll have to be honest, I don't know any of them. But I don't think at 75 I'm expected to know many of them. No. Okay. But there's a cost involved, right? There and, is, and, yes. And so they go to the Parks Department, Spokane Riverfront Park. Yep. And go to their website. Actually, there's a better place to go for all of this, well, isn't yes. there? Uh, what would that be? Visit Spokane.com and oh. we can we can hook you up with all of this. Go to our events page. Yeah. Um, you can look through the calendar. You can look through September. You can, you know, cheat and go uh, skip ahead to, uh, you know, November, December and see if, what's going on. Oh, but good. we're always updating it and we're really excited um, about all the stuff coming up. And yeah. the symphony is back for its 76th season. Uh, oh, finally. After being on hiatus last year. So yes. I'm, I'm very excited. They're going to have, you know, the Nutcracker Ballet is coming up uh, in December. Everything's coming back. So, so the I traditions hope, are coming back, aren't yes, they? Yes, and I hope it stays that way. Yeah, no kidding. Um, with the current situation. But right. uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. And, and okay. Next it. month, we're actually doing something later this month, aren't we? Yeah. We yeah. Are. We're going to start bringing you in on the last week. Yes. to promote what's coming up the next exactly. week so we don't bring you in on the third of of july or something like that so yeah, we yeah i'm gonna have to you're gonna have to see me again in like three weeks or something i'll survive oh okay okay 
We'll, we'll get through it. Yeah. <laughs> Two, she'll Some, pass. One way or the other. <laughs> yes, we'll make it through and I'll have more events. Um, yeah. yeah, we've got lots of stuff Speaking going. of getting through things and stuff, how's Tom doing? Is he waiting for the season to start with? He is, yes. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, he's just at home doing home projects, which oh, really? is great oh, for me. You've got a list, don't yes. you? Well, <laughs> everyone does. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, we try to get it done in the summer, so when the Zags start up their season, we don't have anything yeah. hanging over our heads. Yeah, no kidding. So. Okay. Yeah, so things well, are let's good. hope that uh, the, all the travel is correct. The, I hope so. Coming to Spokane and, the, and for the team to go away and, and all of that. And yeah. let's for, hope for at least as good a season, if not better. I am There's fingers one, crossed. There's one spot better, isn't there? <laughs> okay. Yep. We, yeah, we haven't attained that yet, but we will. I yeah. know we will. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking about yeah. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the possibility of home games again. Yes. That people yes. can actually go to. Right. Uh, so. Hopefully we'll be back on track. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, welcome. Kate, for coming in and for bringing us up to date. What's going on in August? I know. It's nice to see some things. Yes. Sir. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There were other things on here that I didn't even... Did you even... count how many other things? Uh, there were 139 listings okay. uh, for the month of August. Okay. And that included Spokane Indians games. We've got those still going on. Yeah. Uh, shock games are going on. We've right. got all sorts of stuff going There's on. There's one more shock game on the 13th, mm -hmm. Friday... The... Friday the 13th. Yeah. Maybe that'll be good luck. I think it's luck. Yeah. yeah. I'll look at it as lucky. All right. Let's go with it. Thanks <laughs> for watching, everybody. Enjoy Spokane. The economy is getting stronger. Banks are lending again and interest rates are at historic lows. Now is a great time to buy your dream home. The caring and knowledgeable professionals at Homes for You have been helping people just like you for over 20 years. They take the time to listen to what you want and will help you find just the right home in Washington or Idaho. Real estate is what we do at Homes for You, 928-5782 or visit online at Homes, the number four, youspokane.com. This is River Ridge Frame Shop called Frame It Today, where we can take your art, customize it, and get it ready to hang on the wall. Here at River Ridge Harbor, 2803 West Garland. The world has changed a lot in 50 years, and Kimley Haygood has changed with it. We still provide our customers with the highest level of service. Whether it's financing, construction management, property management and maintenance, leasing or sales, our team is here to help you make the best decisions with your real estate. Weather in the inland northwest can wear you down. And if your gutters are in poor condition or you do not have gutters, you could suffer damage that could cost a fortune to fix. Rain Man Seamless Rain Gutters has almost 30 years of professional experience in serving the Inland Northwest region and strives to ensure customer service that is second to none from the time you call to the end of the project. today to learn how PowerView automation makes everyday living effortless. I'm Tyler Lamasters. Spokane's homelessness has been mismanaged by city council. There is no compassion in failure. A fresh perspective is needed to address this issue. In November, I hope you vote for me, Tyler Lamasters, for Spokane City Council, District 2. Paid for by the committee to elect Tyler Lamasters. 
starting a digging project? Before you reach for the shovel, you must click callbeforeyoudig.org, alerting your local utility companies to come out and mark any lines they have near your dig site. Protect our buried utilities and click callbeforeyoudig.org. We'll now join Spokane County Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich for the weekly Sheriff's Report. Welcome to the Sheriff's Report. This is Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich. And today we have a really special guest on the show with us today, Sheriff Mark Lamb from Pinnell County, Arizona. And, you know, Sheriff, you've had a, a pretty tough go over the last few months, probably the last year, with uh, things that are coming over the border, things that, uh, you know, between fentanyl, illegal immigrants, and a lot of crime that's associated with that. Why don't you give folks a little bit of an idea about your background, a little bit about you, and we'll start talking about some of these issues. No, I appreciate it, Sheriff. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know, I never thought about being in law enforcement. It wasn't until late in my 30s, early 30s, that I decided to do a ride along with the neighbor. And one night I was hooked, came home the next morning, told my wife, hey, I'm gonna be a cop. Uh, and so I, I've loved it ever since. I've, I've really taken it to heart. I believe that uh, the men and women who put on this badge every day are, are heroes in our communities and they deserve the respect that, uh, that they probably don't get as often as they should. Uh, and I love, the, uh, I love the, the fact that we're able to be sheriffs in this country. I think that this is a special position where we're elected by the people, for the people. And uh, it's been an honor to serve the, the community and I love going out and about doing what I can. And so uh, I think it's the American way and I love America and it gives me an opportunity to protect her. You know, you, you mentioned the office of sheriff and here in Washington, we're a little bit uh, under attack because one of our counties just voted to go away from an elected sheriff to an appointed sheriff, which basically gave the politicians their total control of law enforcement in King County, Washington. And I don't think people really realize the importance of having that elected sheriff, that, that title elected, because that means the people are in control. They're the ones that control that office. If they don't like what we're doing, every four years we get a job performance evaluation and they can tell us, not, you're not cutting it, you're gone. And I really think that, the, that having that type of control for the public, for a community is vital when it comes to public safety because we saw last summer what happens when politicians decide they're not gonna take care of business, they're not gonna protect their communities. And here in Seattle, you know, they gave away nine city blocks to a group of terrorists. That's their elected officials over in Seattle did that. So, and every sheriff in the state of Washington was like, how could that happen and how do we prevent that from ever happening again? So you're absolutely right, that, that elected sheriff, you, you have a something special, folks, when you have an elected sheriff, especially ones that care. You know, Sheriff, here in the state of Washington, not only did our Seattle government and our governor allow nine city blocks to be taken away, we're a sanctuary state which in my opinion, our governor is in direct violation of the laws of this country because Congress passed certain laws, certain immigration laws. And you know, if the governor doesn't like it, he should be petitioning Congress to change the law. To this date, they haven't done that. But there's a consequence to be a sanctuary county, sanctuary city, sanctuary state, and that is increased crime problems. And you see that on the border all the time. Give us an idea, I mean, fentanyl, they've seized more fentanyl this year at the border than at any other time, but they're catching fractions of that. Tell us what you're seeing down there. Yeah, Sheriff, first and foremost, I mean, it goes to uh, what you guys were dealing with up there in Washington and several other places across this country. What we're dealing with is the rule of law. And we have so many politicians and communities that want to undermine the rule of law by declaring yourself a sanctuary city or sanctuary state undermines the rule of law because what you're saying is hey 
this law doesn't matter. We're not going to hold you accountable for that, but we're going to hold you accountable for this over here. And that's no different than what we're dealing with on the border. This is our version of what you guys dealt with, where they had their sanctuary cities. We are dealing with a a federal government that has turned a blind eye to uh, immigration law. And you hit it best. It is a law. It is on the books. They're not supposed to come to this country illegally. And if you don't like it, then you need to petition Congress and the Senate to change those laws. Until then, it is our duty and responsibility to protect the American people and uphold the law as it relates to immigration. Now, it shouldn't matter what party you are, whether you're Republican or Democrat, independent. If you care about human beings like so many of these people claim to to do, then you should absolutely care about border security because the cartel is abusing these people's on a, rights on a daily basis. Uh, they they rape the women, they use the children as pawns and oftentimes abuse them. They extort the men, they force them to carry drugs. And then you take it off onto the, to, onto the American side. Now you're injecting our communities with who knows who, with carrying what no, who knows what diseases and what criminal backgrounds they have. And uh, I think the biggest point is the drugs issue. You know, the amount of drugs that are flowing into this country is staggering. And every American should be alarmed with what's going on. In 2018, we had zero M30 fentanyl pill seizures. They're those little blue pills, uh, fentanyl pills. In 2019, we had 677 pills. In 2020, we had over 200,000 M30 fentanyl pills. And this year, we're gonna blow those numbers out the water. Arizona is gonna probably double, if not, uh, triple the numbers that we had last year uh, for fentanyl and drugs coming into this country. Here's what's what most Americans don't understand because they think this is an Arizona problem or a border problem or a Texas problem. Uh, this is an America problem. Those those drugs and those humans that are being trafficked in here are not designed to stay here in Arizona. They're designed to go throughout America and, and flood our communities across this country with those dangerous drugs like fentanyl. Uh, if you haven't seen them yet, Sheriff, up there in, in Washington State, you're going to start really seeing a huge increase in the M30 blue, blue M30 fentanyl pills. Uh, and I, I'm concerned as a sheriff, and I know you are, and Americans should be concerned with what's happening and what's being allowed to happen right here on our southern border because of a government who uh, refuses to enforce immigration law, whose policies are failing the American people, and they are disastrous and created this crisis. You know, you're right, Sheriff, when you talk about what we're seeing already. We're a a border county. We border Idaho. And Kootenai County and Spokane County are starting to see the effects of that fentanyl into our communities. We've had about 20 people between the two communities die from overdoses and we're starting to see those pills and that fentanyl being sold by our gang members within the community. And people don't really understand that all this is is criminal activity, but it's also a international conspiracy, if you will, in that China is one of the major suppliers of the fentanyl aspects, the, the, the products that uh, are used to make fentanyl, fentanyl. They send it to Mexico. They have the factories down in Mexico. They build the fentanyl. They ship it over our borders. And this is, in my opinion, a very nefarious act in that they're trying to exploit America's main problem. America has a major problem. And America's problem is, you know, when we talk about this drug issue, America has an addiction problem. It's always had an addiction problem. Until we deal with America's addiction problem, you're going to have a hard time dealing with any of these other aspects. But they are exploiting one of the weaknesses of the American people. And it's really starting to undermine our abilities to protect people. And you on the border, you see those effects. Talk about a little bit about the cartels. You mentioned some of the nefarious things that they, they do, especially to the people they're exploiting. I mean, you see p- pictures and very few media outlets are really talking about this, about the young, young children. I mean, five years old, 
that they're using to bring these things into our country and to exploit this nation in, in such a way, and how they basically recycle these kids time and time again doing this. Yeah, they know what our, our sentiments are. They know that we care about people and so that we're gonna take, uh, if you bring a child here and dump a child off, they know that as Americans, we're gonna stop our system. We're gonna stop the car to deal with that one child. And the cartel knows this. And so they flood us with unaccompanied minors. They could care less about children or human beings, not a care in the world. All they care about is the almighty dollar, which they charge about $5,000 to somebody trying to cross over into this country. Uh, I imagine they charge a lot more if they give you a child to pretend as if you're a family, only to dump that child once you get across the border here in America. Uh, they have zero regard for human life and children. And they steal the children, they buy the children, uh, they do whatever they can to get the children to continue to push their, their nefarious and, and criminal activity, which includes human trafficking and drug trafficking. What about the media? What you're seeing on the national level as far as them dropping the ball and not telling the American people the truth about this issue? Yeah, the media is terrible. I mean, whether it's your local media, national media, they've completely dropped the ball. Very few outlets are actually talking about the issues we're facing. And none of them really want to address some of the really difficult issues to talk about. You know, we've got this government talking about COVID and We've got us, they've got us focused on the border crisis, which we should be. What about the 424,000 children that went missing last year? Or the 421,000 that went missing the year before that? And the 414,000 children that went missing before that? I don't hear them ever talking about that. They don't talk about the, the predators on the street that are preying on our children. They don't talk about the women who are being trafficked into this country and who are being sold on a daily basis uh, to men and other people. I mean, this is something that should be uh, talked about in the media, and they're not. They love it when we talk about border or COVID or any of those things because we're not talking about some of those other uncomfortable issues. And so, look, that's what I want to see. They talk about going door to door to see if you have a COVID vaccine. I would never condone any door-to-door -door government operation, but if you were going to go door-to-door, -door, how about start by looking for those 424,000 children that went missing last year? You know, that's why we've stood up. Sheriff, you mentioned it. Protect America Now is the organization that we put together. Sheriffs from across this country coming together to stand up for the rule of law, to fight against bad policies like what we're seeing on the border, and to protect the people's constitutional rights uh, and to uphold the Constitution. That's what we were determined to do, and uh, hopefully your listeners will check it out at protectamericanow.com. We need the support of the people, one voice as the people and as sheriffs across this country. That's how we're gonna defeat a lot of this nonsense. I, I believe you're absolutely right that something has to happen to wake the American people up. And uh, you know, I do have a, a, a lot of hope in that area because you're starting to see that 80% of America waking up and going, wait a minute, how did we get extremes on both left and right uh, in control of this government? How did that happen to us? What is our way to make that this not happen any f further? And I'll tell you the secret, folks, extremes vote in primaries. And if you want to take your government back, you want to get, people that truly care about America elected, that people that truly care about you elected, you need to vote in the primaries. That's where everything is won and lost anymore. Vote in the primaries and, you, and vote for people that care about you. you know, way too often I, we focus on the letters behind somebody's name. Those letters, you know, George Washington, our first president warned us, Watch out for the party system because it will destroy America. It will divide us. And if you take a look around, I think you see that the man knew exactly what he was talking about. MS-13, everybody talks about MS-13, Sheriff. What do you see coming across the border in, uh, in your area and how much influence do you, you see that particular criminal organization, that gang, having um, and the effect it's having on your area and the United States? 
You know, fortunately, we don't deal with MS-13. Uh, if there was one good thing about the cartels is it keeps MS-13 out of your communities. The cartel hates MS-13 and vice versa. Uh, so we just don't, we're cartel, cartel heavy here, Mexican mafia. Uh, and so you just don't see the MS-13 influence like you would see back on the East Coast or in a lot of other parts across this country. Uh, MS-13, from what I understand, talking to other sheriffs, very violent, very destructive to communities, uh, extremely gang oriented, unlike the cartels. So uh, these are things that, you know, uh, but this is precipitated by their failure to control the borders and by giving strength to groups like MS-13 on in parts of our country. Uh, I feel for those who are dealing with MS-13, um, but we're dealing with the cartel here. That's what we deal with. And, and they are violent. They are destroying our communities through drugs and human trafficking. And, uh, and that's the battle we face every day. As far as the, the gang issue that you're seeing in your, your community here locally, we've lost uh, six young men, 15 to 25 year olds in our community since September due to gang violence. And uh, it's centered around selling guns, selling fentanyl, selling drugs, selling, of all things, vape pens. What are you seeing down there as far as the drug, drug activity and the, the gang activity, the youth violence uh, in your area? Well, fortunately, we don't have a strong gang presence here in our, our county. We do have some. Um, we have a unit that I call GHOST, our Gang and Habitual Offender Strike Team. And uh, they're pretty active and stay on top of these kids a, a lot. So if we start se seeing any violence or hearing anything, I mean, we're on them like stink on doo-doo. And this is something that you have to do to be able to combat the gangs. I spent most of my career as a gang and drug detective. And, uh, you know, this sounds terrible, but if you don't have your proverbial boot in their throat, they're going to run amok and they're going to start creating problems. You know, we do have gang activity. I mean, it, it, any big city is going to have gang activity. Um, and it's, you know, we do the best we can in law enforcement to try to curtail that or, or squash, squash it entirely. Uh, but these kids, man, every day there's more teenagers. And they are all trying to make their way in this world and try to flex their muscle. And, and unfortunately, we have to deal with that as law enforcement officials, especially as it relates to gang members. In order for that to be so, uh, so successful for you, you have to have some kind of uh, community involvement. Uh, it, parents and, and community leaders have to be standing behind you in order to not have that gang influence popping up as heavily as we are. And that's one of the weaknesses we've had is, you know, we had a, a, a very, very late come to the table response. Um, and some, of the, some areas uh, of the community uh, have not, they refuse. They'd rather focus on the things that divide us rather than saving the kids. So I take it that you have a lot of your community leaders, as far as leaders within the, the, the communities, have your back on this effort. Yeah, you're exactly right, Sheriff. Where you struggle with gangs is because you have weak politicians or politicians who are uh, agenda driven and they are trying to turn a blind eye to it, or they're trying to make excuses for the gang activity and the gang behavior. You look at places like Chicago right now, there's overrun with violent crime and gang members. And it starts with a with an absolutely terrible government. Um, we have seen it on full display. And then now the taxpayers are having to bail them out on a federal level, billions of dollars to go in there and fix the problem that bad politicians have created. And you, it goes back to what you were saying before, Sheriff. It's important that we as voters uh, make sure that we're voting in the right people. Local elections affect our daily lives. School boards, uh, county elections affect our daily lives far more than federal elections do. So it's important that you're involved in your, your local elections. Um, and you know, to answer your question, how do you fix it? Term limits. Uh, as long as we allow people to stay in Washington for as long as they are, they're going to be thirsty for power. And instead of trying to do the right thing to, to, to protect their communities, they're going to continue to do what they need to do to stay in power. Uh, and, and it's at the expense of the American people. So we've got to get these old coots out of there. Can't let them 
I mean, people serving for 50 years in government is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, power, power tends to be uh, um, an evil mix when it comes to elected officials. I don't know why they succumb to it. And even worse, they will do anything to maintain that power. And we saw that in 2020. We saw our cities burn in 2020. And quite frankly, that those actions were condoned by elected officials within those cities, within the states uh, those cities reside in, and even at the national level. The, the mayor of Seattle, when, when they lost control of nine city blocks, literally said, well, it, it, it's gonna be a, a, a summer of love. Well, that summer of love turned very violent because the first thing those folks did was build a wall. Uh, it, everybody talks about, you know, we can't build a wall down on the southern border, but these people literally, the first thing they did was build a, a wall around the areas they took over. They put armed guards on those walls and then chaos reigned within those walls for two weeks before people started going, what have we done? I don't think people realize what we, th that effect had. It let a genie out of the bottle and that genie is killing a lot of kids right now because that youth violence, that gang violence, you can't have a summer of total violence and expect that you're not going to see a carryover into that because people think they can get away with it now. I really think that one thing I'd like you to address before we close up is this false narrative that law enforcement is the problem. The false narrative that law enforcement, you know, is the enemy. We do a lot of great work. We work with our communities. We try our best to keep people safe, but there's this narrative that we don't really need law enforcement. Um, my question to those who say that now is, how's that working for you? Yeah, these are people that uh, hate America and they have, by their own admissions, they wanna reinvent America. And one of the things that has been the backbone to America, well, two things, the family unity, and also the rule of law in this country. That is what's made us different from all these other countries across the world. There are other democracies, there are other countries that have constitutions, but the strength of our country has come from our rule of law and how we've done it. Is it perfect? No, but it is. it has been what's given us our strength for so long. And to be able to reinvent America, you need to undo that rule of law. You need to create chaos in communities, which is why they allow the border to continue to be what it is, which is why they've allowed Chicago to continue to go the route it has or other big cities across this country, because they wanna be able to create chaos and swoop in and fix it and save the day. They wanna do it by, uh, by taking people like us, the sheriffs who protect our communities out of power, like what you saw in, in, uh, in King County. So we have to stand tall. We have to uphold the rule of law and make no mistake about it. The media is complicit in this, but 80% of Americans still support Amer uh, the law enforcement people across this country. And I think even amongst African Americans, it's still over 70% believe that there is sufficient or not enough law enforcement in their communities. And so we need to understand this in law enforcement. Hopefully the American people understand that don't listen to the media, don't listen to the politicians who would tell you that we're not doing it right because we are. We're always working it. I know you, Sheriff, are probably like me, where you're always looking at ways that we can fix it and make it better and make our agencies uh, exactly what we want them to be. But to throw a blanket of reform over the entire country, over every agency in this country is not fair either because there's a lot of us that are doing it well and uh, we have good communication with our communities and we protect our communities, we've reduced crime, we've done a lot of different things. And so I think that uh, this is a false narrative. They don't have any statistics to back it up. They're playing off of, the, off of emotion and they are speaking for a very small percentage of the American people who really just don't like America and they wanna see it change. Yeah, absolutely right when it comes to those, those points because there was just a poll released by Harris Poll. 75% of Americans think we need more police. Right now, they, that is the number one issue in our country at the political level, and these politicians are starting to wake up to it, going, um, maybe we missed the boat on this. Well, my goal 
And I've told every sheriff in the state of Washington this in May at our, our Chiefs and Sheriffs Conference, it's time to identify all these politicians who pass these type of reform bills without even asking our input, because I can tell you it's causing chaos in, in Washington right now. Let them know, let your citizens know, because Sheriff, you tend to be one of the more respected electeds in your areas. Let the people know these politicians that did not support the rule of law, that did not support you, the community, in keeping your community safe, because I work for you folks. I work for the people. Every law enforcement officer out there understands we work for the people. These politicians, I don't know who they're working for anymore, it's, but it surely is not you. Sheriff, I really appreciate you coming on. I really appreciate the work you're doing down on the border. I really appreciate the fact you are trying to educate the American people about what is truly going on. Keep up the great work, and if there's any time you'd like to uh, you know, reach out to us, you have something more to say, we'll have you back on. We'll talk about those issues. And uh, thank you very much for all you do. Folks, this is Sheriff Heisman. I appreciate Nezovich. it, Sheriff. Go ahead, Sheriff. I was just going to say one more thing. If you want to check out uh, American Sheriff Network, and that's at americansheriff.com, uh, they, they turned off our voice for law enforcement, and uh, we're giving it back. It's, 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 if you miss live PD and you miss cops, come check it out at americansheriff.com. Um, we're highlighting sheriffs from across the country and the good work that they do and, and giving a voice back to law enforcement. So thank you again, Sheriff, for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you for all you do. And if you ever make it down to Arizona, love to give you a tour of what we're seeing down here on the border area. I think I'm going to take you up on that one. And folks, he's right. They had to silence the voice. LIPD and cops, they showed you what was really going on out on the street. And those on the left hated that. They couldn't stand the fact that people were actually seeing what was truly going on out on the streets. They had to silence those voices. Sheriff, thanks for bringing those back. Folks, this is Sheriff Ozzy Knezwich with the Sheriff's Report. Have a great day. And that'll wrap up this week's episode of The Pulse. Tune in next week, same time, for more news and conversation with Spokane Talks. I'm Sam Perry, stay frosty.